On Wednesday last week, we got some news that I don't think any of us were really ready for. Um, Chanel confirmed that Virginie Viard was out, no longer the creative director, or in their own words, hold on a second, Chanel confirms the departure of Virginie Viard after a rich five-year collaboration. And so, as the game of creative director musical chairs continues, one of the biggest jobs in luxury fashion is open. I mean, this definitely came as a surprise. I think that although there have been chatterings about people not being happy with Virginie and whenever a collection comes out, you know, people slate it and whatever, whatever else, I don't think anybody was ready for this announcement, especially because um, a couple of weeks before this, they had their financials report and they were talking about how amazing Chanel is doing, their growth has been up 16%, um, Virginie has been a huge part in that, they made just under $20 billion last year. All of these are sounding great. On top of that, in May, Chanel's president of fashion, Bruno Pavlovsky, told the Fashion Network, Virginie is doing extremely well. You know, ever since she succeeded Karl Lagerfeld, certain people have chatted about other designers at Chanel. But I want to be clear, Chanel is not looking for a new artistic director, and you can print that. Well, it's a bit awkward now, isn't it? We don't know who's made the decision, we don't know if Virginie had enough, um, if Chanel had had enough, whatever else, and we probably will never really know what went down. But I want to talk about what Chanel was under Virginie, what it may be looking for in a new creative director, and the names that have been thrown out there, right? What is the future of Chanel? Guys, if you're new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. Set down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> <laughs> Never. It's no secret that after this announcement, uh, a lot of people on the internet uh, rejoiced. Since Virginie has been creator director, people have been pulling her apart left, right and centre, from, you know, like, disappointing couture shows to the last very depressing cruise collection. The weather didn't help. The weather didn't help there. And, without a doubt, these are very hard shoes to fill, right? You're now taking over from somebody who, Karl Lagerfeld, is pretty much the Chanel that we know of, right? He was in that role for decades, um, that was him. And so to come into this role, uh, filling the shoes of somebody who was very much loved, very highly regarded, um, is not going to be easy. And we can sit here and we can compare and contrast the Chanel collections between Virginie and Carl and what they looked like and the ready to wear and the accessories under each. But really I think um, the main sort of difference to me, and there's a bit of a caveat to this, was the runway shows. The runway shows under Carl, you were transported into a completely different world. There was a spaceship that actually shot off into the sky. There was the cafe, there was the casino, there was the supermarket, one of my favourite collections of all time. There was the motherboard, there was, you know, all of these crazy, crazy set designs and exactly like you were immersed into the world of whatever that collection was. And I think that with Virginie, however we don't know how much of this is the higher ups, we don't know how much of this is Virginie or is, you know, the sort of the CEOs and whatever else decision, you didn't get that from the runway. It was, it was very sort of like watered down in terms of what the shows were. And in terms of the clothing, what I'd sort of like heard on the grapevine, and this isn't the be all and end all, and this is just what I've heard natterings about, the people that are buying Chanel Ready to Wear, Chanel Ready to Wear, especially under her, has grown, I have numbers, but especially under Ready to Wear, I think a lot of people who are buying it, those VICs, found it to be a lot more wearable for the everyday. It was less of an occasion needed to wear these pieces. That's why like Chanel jeans have always done really, really well since she's um, uh, been in the role. Anyway, but I think that we can all see that there has been a massive difference between Carl and between Virginie and whether or not you like her, you don't like her, whatever. We can sit here and complain all day, but how did she perform? According to the CEO, Lena Nair, since Virginie, uh, Chanel's fashion business has multiplied by 2.2 and Ready to Wear has multiplied by 2.5. That all sounds great. But one thing to keep in mind is that Chanel is a privately owned company. They can tell us 
of their, you know, financials or whatever. I'm not saying that they're lying. Everything is alleged, whatever. I'm sure that there is truth to these, but we don't know the breakdown. We don't know how much of the 16% growth and all of that is due to fragrance, is due to the price increases that we've been seeing. And oh, it's 16% up because there've been price increases. And so that's where you're seeing the growth from. We're never really going to know, right? Because they're gonna obviously hold those cards very close to the chest. Nonetheless, Virginie is out, and a few names have been swirling around the ether to replace her. I wanted to go through and kind of break down my thoughts on each one, but I also wanted to keep in mind the following. Number one, we don't know when they're going to announce this. I've heard rumours of we're going to hear about who's going to be the creative director in like nine months. We don't know. It could be next week, it could be nine months. With a lot of these creative directors, if they're leaving, a brand, there's usually a one year non-compete in place. So they're not allowed to go to another brand probably of like the same stature or whatever within a year. So kind of keep that in mind. Again, we don't really know the timeline, so it's just something to have in the back of your mind. The other thing is, and in my opinion, I think Chanel needs consistency. Chanel cannot be one of those luxury brands, um, and we've seen a lot of the brands do this uh, over the past few years, that are chopping and changing creative directors. I don't think in, that's not them to me. They need consistency. They need somebody that's going to be there for the long haul be it five years, be it 10, be it on and on and on, you know? So I think that's also something that we need to kind of factor in mind. The first name is Jeremy Scott. And this is one that wasn't even on my radar until there was a published little exchange on Dana Thomas, the author's uh, substack, that she had like a little sort of run in with him at a party in 2023. And there were implications that he may be in talks um, with Chanel. We don't know if he was taking the piss and she was like, are you going to Chanel? And he was like, mm, and then ran off, you know? We don't know any of that. What we do know, however, is that Karl Lagerfeld was a fan of Jeremy Scott's work. So if they want to kind of like keep Karl's wishes in mind, maybe he's a contender. I know that this is going to horrify a lot of people because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I've really only seen Jeremy Scott through Moschino or his Adidas Originals collections and all of that. And it's over the top. It's very gimmicky. It's very novelty and everything. I feel like with all of these creator directors, you would hope that they understand the gravitas of this role. <laughs> Maybe I just wanted to use that word and be able to kind of marry the heritage with those fun aspects that were very much a core part of the brand under Carl and not take it too far. You know, I don't know. I, for one, would find it extremely interesting if he were creative director. I would just love to see what Chanel looks like through his lens. I don't think he would take it that far in terms of the gimmicks, but maybe I'm wrong. So here's name number one. The second name floating around is Pier Paolo Piccioli, recently left Valentino, a very talented man with experience in couture and all of that, obviously down to ready to wear. I feel as though that would be a pretty decent fit. Eddie Slimmer. This is the name that everybody is putting the most money on, right? Ooh. If I were a betting woman, should we? Oh, maybe I put just like a little, a little $10 down. Who would one even go to, to be like, listen, what are the odds on Chanel Creative Director? <laughs> we need, a, we need a, a luxury fashion casino. No, we don't, Cassie. Don't talk, gambling. Uh, spend your money responsibly. Anyway, so he seems to really be the front runner. Currently, we still think that he's Creative Director of Celine. We don't know if he's left or not. All we know is that he's still in renegotiations um, whatever that looks like. But for all we know, he might have said sod off to that job two months ago and he's a free agent. Carl, once again, was a fan of Eddie. He famously lost a lot of weight to be able to fit into Eddie's designs. Controversial. Um, undoubtedly talented, but I get the impression that he is stubborn in that Eddie Slimmer is going to design Eddie Slimmer no matter where he is. Um, I think that he really kind of brought that vision when he went from Saint Laurent to Celine. Fair enough, I think he's done a really, really amazing job with Celine actually. 
But another thing that I think is very interesting to keep in the back of your mind with this is that he does not have a relationship with Vogue. Notoriously, Celine does not give their pictures to like Vogue Runway. Vogue Runway isn't there to kind of publish pictures. They don't do any work with Vogue. I don't really know the ins and outs of whatever that beef was, but basically that's that. Obviously, I think that's a very key relationship with Chanel. Is that something that means that he's out of the running? Could that relationship be so? I don't know, but I think it's an interesting thing to note. The next one, controversial, John Galliano, who is on a bit of a redemption tour, I would say, following some terrible remarks he made back in the day. Uh, there's been a documentary come out. Anna Winter also seems to be a very big fan of his, and obviously there was a very big push for Galliano designed uh, Margiela at the Met Gala this year. So he's sort of a name that's come up. You know, Couture, this man knows what he's doing. However, I think due to his past, also due to who the owners are of Chanel, I don't think that that would be a hire that they would make. I think that he's a bit of a risky move for them with a brand like Chanel and his past. I really don't think that he's a contender. Sarah Burton of McQueen fame. Now, the interesting thing with Sarah Burton is that we only know of her at McQueen. She is really kind of like the virgin -y Viard of McQueen, right? Huge, incredible design force, sadly passes away, protege steps up, um, and she's been manning the helm? Manning the, uh, manning the helm? Is that the right? She's been driving that ship forwards. I think that she would be interesting. Once again, we don't really know what she's like designing outside of McQueen, but what we do know is that McQueen has excellent tailoring. And Chanel, obviously, likes a good jacket, those Chanel suits, all of that core part of the brand, that would be interesting to see. Could she do something really fun and interesting and fresh with the Chanel suits that still matches the heritage? I would be intrigued by her. Marc Jacobs. I think he would be one of my favourites for this role. I think that he can walk that line of fun and elegant really well. We've seen him when he was um, creator director of women's wear at Louis Vuitton. And he has the experience of working with a ginormous brand that also pumps out a lot of collections. Fair enough, they do more collections now than they did when he was creator director. But I think he has the experience for it. However, he has his own brand. And I feel as though the Chanel appointment is one that leaves no room for focus of anything else. They do a hell of a lot of shows and I don't know if he would have to sort of leave his brand behind in order to do that and that's what makes me feel that again I don't think that he has the bandwidth. I have also heard the name Tom Brown been thrown into the ring and if his Met Gala looks for the Carl themed Met Gala are anything to go by I think he would be a very very good one too. I think he has that kind of like theatre um, that comes along with his shows with his pieces and all of that that would do quite well with a Chanel vision. Interesting. Now the other names that are kind of like thrown out into the ring are much more kind of younger um, newer designers. I've heard Simone Rocha, I've heard Jacques Mousse, I've heard Grace Wales Bonner and as much as I think it would be great to give it to a young designer, what a huge post. I don't think they're gonna do it. I think it's too risky for them. I think they need a kind of name designer, somebody who has the experience, however they could promote from within. They could do a Virginie like they did. They could do, you know, Alessandro Michele at Gucci. Again, he was somebody that worked there forever. They could do that. I don't think they will. I think that they'll give this post to somebody big, with experience, but they might turn around and do something that I've not even sodding thought about and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this thing. I do think it's a very exciting time to see how things play out. The current design, they're still going to show for the, uh, Couture is what, this month? Couture is this month. Uh, they're still going to show, show Couture. They're still going to do the upcoming shows until they announce who the new creator director will be. And that will be led by the current design teams. Chanel really can run by itself. It's that big. It's that much of like a well-oiled machine, but they do need somebody at the helm. Like I said, I think Chanel needs consistency. I think that it needs somebody that's going to pull in 
the very core like it's 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 a huge house that leans a lot on its heritage maybe one of the brands that actually leans the most on its history and on its heritage and, and, and all of that business it needs somebody that's going to pull that in but look at things through a very different fun fresh lens and marry the two i think that they want something that yes is wearable and commercial that virginie was giving but with a bit of a twist and a little bit of um it factor maybe i don't know but it's absolutely fascinating what do you think who do you think they're going to appoint who do you want them to give it to that's a better question i'm interested to see how all of this plays out i'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it have an amazing morning afternoon or evening wherever you are in the words of my father if you've enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't keep your mouth shut I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.